Hi, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate with an earlier briefing during the day today. It's Monday, September 29th, 2025, almost three o'clock straight up on the East Coast. Uh, this is a brief update for the All Hazards Consortium, the sensitive information sharing environment after the 2 p.m. Eastern Time update on both Hurricane Umberto and Tropical Storm Imelda. Take a look at this wild satellite image. Folks, you won't see this much at all. I'll raise this up just a little bit over and move it towards the middle here. We have Tropical Storm Imelda with winds of 60 miles per hour and also Hurricane Umberto, a Category 4 hurricane that is going to play a role in where Imelda ends up going. If you've ever thanked a Category 4 hurricane before, thank Umberto for what's about to happen. I'll get to that in just a minute. We just got through with some uh, missions from the NOAA aircraft, and I'm going to show that to you on GeoCollaborate here uh, full screen. There's a lot going on, but I'll explain it to you. This green line here, all these flight patterns through the storm, that was taken by the WP3D Orion Hurricane Hunter from NOAA. That is Kermit, and it has flown its last mission into Imelda. Why? They've been flying a whole lot of missions lately, and the U.S. Air Force is going to take over with their Hurricane Hunter aircraft, flying out of Homestead into Imelda until the storm is no longer a threat. So the hurricane hunters have been flying the last several days, gathering critical data to inform weather forecast models. We talk about that a lot for this very challenging forecast. As I mentioned, the 53rd Weather Squadron will continue to fly to provide center fixes and additional observations that are critical to keeping the nation safe. I do want to mention a couple of things here, though, when it comes to uh, the P3 missions and what they've been able to accomplish. So today's P3 mission collected valuable tail Doppler radar data for NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Prediction and the Environmental Modeling Center and forecasters at the National Hurricane Center to capture the 3D structure of Imelda's winds, precipitation, and vortex structure. This is really critical for determining when, where, and how fast Imelda is going to develop. This was the last planned NOAA mission into Imelda, but twice per day, P3 and G4 flights began on Thursday, September 25th, when Imelda was a disorganized tropical disturbance through September 29th, today, when it was a 50 mile per hour tropical storm. Now, it's 60 miles per hour. The Apex HRD, it's called Advancing the Prediction of Hurricanes Experiment, NOAA's NESDIS Global Ocean Monitoring and Observing GOMO program, the University of Miami, and the Office of Naval Research in their project called Sasquatch, those science teams collaborated to conduct several research modules to collect supplemental atmospheric and oceanic data in the storm environment. It's been pretty amazing. In total, the Atlantic Oceanographic Marine Lab, which houses the Hurricane Research Division, supported a total of eight WP3D operational tail radar missions, that's Kermit, and eight operational Gonzo missions for synoptic surveillance. The synoptic missions are conducted by the G4, uh, and this overall effort included, I know this is kind of geeky, but I do want to call them out because they did such a great job. Daily flight track planning for the P3s, onboard lead project scientist support for the P3s, onboard ground-based processing and transmission of 55 tail Doppler radar analyses to NOAA's Environmental Modeling Center and forecasters at the National Hurricane Center, Ground-based processing of 430 GPS dropsons that were transmitted in real time uh, to the global telecommunication system. That's from the P3s and the G4. And listen to this. There were even successful deployments earlier today of two Black Swift S0 small uncrewed aerial systems 
to sample the tropical cyclone inflow layer and lowest regions just above the ocean surface, called the boundary layer. Real-time meteorological data from the Black Swift s zeros was also transmitted to the National Hurricane Center. They may have even set a world record time for how for low altitude flight time in a tropical cyclone. I think it was something like 111 and a half minutes. Wow, congratulations to that team. NOAA modules were flown strategic use of emerging technologies to advance hurricane prediction, vortex alignment modules, Nesdis ocean winds, Sasquatch ocean observing, and chaos ocean observing. Testing new methods to process radar observations from the aircraft and ground to streamline onboard crewing. I gotta tell you, they flew the Gulf Stream 4 over Hurricane Umberto a couple of times, which really doesn't happen at all uh, because they always fly around the environment. But they did it this time to push the envelope and try to gather additional research data. They trained National Weather Service and Aircraft Operations Center personnel to quality control observations from the P-3 missions. So never before in our satellite data records history have we seen a Cat 4 hurricane so close to a developing tropical cyclone that is so close to the U.S. coastline. I mean, this is just incredible. I mentioned yesterday in our update that Umberto is a very deep low pressure system, creating an area of very low pressure around it. In addition, low pressure systems like to take the path of least resistance and Umberto seems to be opening that door for Imelda to follow. Let's take a look at the statistics as of two o'clock. Hurricane Umberto is still a major category four hurricane and tropical storm conditions are possible in Bermuda tomorrow. It's located at 28.5 north, 67.9 west, about 320 miles southwest of Bermuda. Maximum sustained winds, 140 miles per hour, Still a strong Category 4 hurricane. The minimum central pressures come up a little bit, but still very low, 942 millibars, moving to the north-northwest at 13 miles per hour. Forecast for Umberto looks like this. Maintaining Category 4 status at least uh, through 11 o'clock tonight, uh, but maintaining major hurricane status until 11 o'clock tomorrow night. So that's 36 hours from now. We're going to still have a major hurricane out there, and that's really going to be driving a lot of very large ocean swells towards the East Coast and towards Bermuda and towards Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles, the Northern Lesser Antilles, and also Hispaniola. Keep an eye out for that. We're going to have very strong rip currents. And then the forecast continues on where Umberto is forecast to become a Category 1 90-mile-an-hour hurricane well out in the Atlantic Ocean by 11 o'clock Wednesday. Imelda at 2 o'clock is starting to move north of the Bahamas. You can see the last of the Bahama Islands right there. It's moving to the north. Very, very warm water. Located 27.2 north, 77.3 west. Maximum sustained winds right now, 60 miles per hour. It's continuing to intensify. Minimum central pressure, 988 millibars. Movement to the north at 9 miles per hour. In about 12 to 24 hours, uh, we should start to see a movement probably closer to 24 hours to the north-northeast and then the northeast and then to the east. So we'll be keeping our eyes on that direction of movement, and that's why it's critical for the 53rd Weather Squadron Hurricane Hunters to be out there doing center fixes for the National Hurricane Center. Forecast for Imelda looks like this. Tropical storm status until about early in the morning tomorrow and then reaching Category 1 80 mile per hour winds uh, on Tuesday. This is going to kick up and it's currently kicking up lots of waves on Florida's east coast, lots of rip currents and beach erosion. That's only going to get worse as time goes on for the next 24 hours. Uh, as Imelda gets stronger, the wind field gets a little bit broader and those winds uh, keep blowing inland. Look at this, Imelda forecast to reach Category 2 hurricane strength, 100 miles per hour at 2 a.m. on Thursday uh, before it goes back down 
the Category 1, then Tropical Storm uh, out in the Atlantic Ocean. Some of the models actually are combining Imelda and Umberto uh, when they get further out into the ocean. Uh, it's pretty amazing. We'll have to see what happens there. Just an incredible situation here. Thank goodness the forecast takes this system, Imelda, off to the east. This is GeoCollaborate. We can point out that's the forecast. Here's where the hurricane is. We should start to see in the next 12 hours turn towards the northeast, north-northeast, and then towards the east as it gets on out of here. That's the official forecast of the National Hurricane Center. There are no tropical storm watches in effect for land in the East Coast, including Florida. That's uh, the ones that are mostly threatened by this storm right now. But just offshore, there are tropical storm warnings uh, in effect. This is the radius of maximum winds for Imelda. So these are tropical storm force. Notice that it's more uh, windy or extends out further to the east and the north of the system. There are plenty of high surf advisories. So swimming along Florida's east coast, Georgia, South Carolina, not recommended uh, because we do have those swells being generated by Imelda combining with the larger swells from Umberto. They are reaching the U.S. coastline today. So the tropical storm warnings that are in effect right now include Portions of the northwestern Bahamas, including Eleuthera, the Abacos, Grand Bahama Island, and the surrounding Keys. Tropical storm warning means that tropical storm conditions are expected somewhere within the warning area, uh, and in this case, within the next 12 hours. Interests in Bermuda should also monitor the progress of Imelda. Hurricane watches could be required for the island as soon as this afternoon, probably with the National Hurricane Center five o'clock update. And here's a live look right now at Daytona Beach. We're swinging down to the south and you can see those showers and storms that are off the coast. That is part of Imelda. We're looking in Daytona Beach down to the south out over the ocean and there you can see those dark clouds and rain, heavy rain bands just down to the south. But look at the waves. There's a lot of white water throughout Daytona Beach, and that's creating quite a few rip currents. Uh, the sun is in and out. You can see how fast the shadows are moving. Uh, these clouds are moving quickly because those winds uh, just at four or 5,000 feet are pretty strong. But a stormy day out off the coast in Daytona Beach in Florida, and you can see those showers and uh, sort of thunderstorm clouds of those towering cumulus clouds and the darkness on the horizon, that's where the storm really picks up. And this is the radar from Melbourne, Florida. You can see those storms just off the coast, almost see some sort of center uh, of the storm rotation out here, but the radar beam is just a little bit too high. Uh, but here is Daytona Beach, and you can see those showers and storms. These are probably the ones that we saw right over the horizon here, those spiral bands. Uh, and indeed, that is very heavy rain uh, out to the west or to the east on the western side of the storm. But what else do you notice? These storms are not really making it to any further to the west. There are some spiral bands that are coming out, but nothing incredibly heavy. That is really great news. And hopefully as we see Imelda turn to the east, it'll take all this heavy rain with it and we won't have to worry about any serious flooding along the east coast of Florida or in South Carolina. Now, it looks like maybe about two to perhaps four inches of rain could fall in, uh, in total as these uh, uh, squalls move through eastern Florida. In the meantime, however, just to the north in South Carolina, uh, there is that trough of low pressure that's pulling up moisture from Imelda, and we're seeing quite a bit of heavy rain, as we mentioned yesterday, that we were likely to see in Myrtle Beach, down to Georgetown, not so much as of yet in Charleston, which is great news, uh, but we can see some scattered storms coming through Savannah right now. But this is that trail of moisture uh, that's coming right up into eastern uh, North uh, South Carolina, and uh, extreme southern North Carolina. So Wilmington and Jacksonville, North Carolina, up on towards uh, Oak Island. Not too much in the way of heavy rain right now, uh, but we are seeing it in South Carolina. That's where we'll see uh, perhaps 
two to four inches of rain as well, coming down very heavy at times, causing localized flooding. Uh, but they did just redo a whole infrastructure project of storm water uh, management in Myrtle Beach. So it should be able to handle uh, this amount of rain. Now shifting up to the north just slightly, you can see that there are some heavy thunderstorms that are moving in from offshore. Uh, this is a combination of that trough of low pressure and Imelda uh, with the moisture coming up. So expect squally weather with some intense rainfall, uh, even from Wilmington on up to the Outer Banks. That's what we're going to see as this storm starts to veer to the northeast and then to the east. This rain is going to be quite persistent for the next 24 hours or so. You can notice, though, in the satellite loop, all the clouds that are coming up over Pennsylvania and New York and even covering Boston, southern New Hampshire and Vermont, headed into Maine. This is outflow from Tropical Storm Imelda. And there's also a, a trough of low pressure. You can see this frontal system that's interacting with this over the eastern Carolinas and Virginia and Maryland, uh, giving enhancing that rainfall in here. And uh, that's what's going on, though. It's pumping a lot of moisture up into uh, South Carolina. And that's what we just saw on the radar. Meanwhile, Umberto out here is uh, really cooking and will start to take a curve uh, to head north of Bermuda. Uh, but there's still, with that wind field, could be tropical storm watches or hurricane watches issued by the Hurricane Center later today. And you can see some dry air coming out on the back of it. Look, over uh, portions of central Florida, doesn't mean that it's totally sunny. We do have some showers and thunderstorms developing. You can see the dry air. I've combined two satellite channels uh, in this goes east high res image. Uh, the water vapor uh, image and also the visible satellite image. I can turn off uh, the water vapor image and show you what the visible data looks like. That's just where are the clouds. Uh, but we can see the moisture uh, when I turn on the high uh, level uh, tropospheric water vapor. This is the upper level uh, tropospheric water vapor where you can start to see uh, what's going on with the moisture. And so all these important tools come to us from NOAA and the NOAA satellite program, uh, which is very, very important to all of us meteorologists and decision makers like emergency managers too. So let's take a look at the forecast here real quickly, and I'll show you what the numerical weather prediction models are doing with these two storms so close to each other. And I'll put it into motion here. You can see Umberto on the right, Imelda on the left, close to the U.S. And as we advance this, you can see how Umberto moves out, creates that pressure field. It's that low pressure. It's almost like an invitation saying, come on, Imelda, come this way. You don't want to go uh, to the United States. Uh, they've suffered enough with tropical systems over the last couple of years. Come out and follow me. It's much more fun out here in the ocean. And here goes Imelda following Umberto with that low pressure, just really leading the way and saying, come this way, Imelda, and it's good riddance. We don't want any more hurricanes to hit the United States. Only one year ago, residents from Florida up to Western North Carolina we're suffering the brunt of Hurricane Helene and the devastating floods out there. So there goes Imelda, and we're talking about Thursday afternoon now. Some of the models actually combine these two systems together. Out there, it will impact maritime traffic. That's for sure. No such thing as fish storm out there. Okay, so that's it for this update on Monday. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. We'll continue to monitor these two storms. Uh, we'll have another update during the day tomorrow uh, for the All Hazards Consortium and Sensitive Information and Sharing Environment. We thank you for watching. Please watch out for yourself and watch out for your neighbors. They really do appreciate it. Have yourself a great evening.